The semiconductor industry represents the core of the technological future and is central in the rivalry between China and the United States. To limit Chinese advancements, the country faces severe U.S. restrictions in critical technology sector. These restrictions occur primarily on two fronts. The first is the limitation of exports to China of essential equipment for the production of high-performance chips, such as lithography machines. The second is the prohibition of sales to China of cutting-edge chips, such as those intended for artificial intelligence applications. Such measures have encouraged the independent development of semiconductors in China. So how advanced are Chinese AI chips? Is the gap with the world's leading chips really that significant? Before the U.S. restrictions, the Chinese AI market held 90% of the global share. Far from shaking China, the restrictions have propelled the emergence of various local technology companies, including Huawei, Alibaba, Cambricon, and more Thread, which have already achieved notable progress. However, Chinese chips still face significant challenges. One is chip design. Designers are capable of creating excellent chips, but the manual approach from decades ago to designing circuits is outdated. Currently, a wide variety of electronic design automation, EDA tools are employed, such as ETA tools, which allow placing 200 million transistors and performing routing in just one square millimeter. These tools, through advanced calculations, not only optimize the location of each transistor but also perfectly balance the operating speed and space of each logical unit on the chip. Thus, these chip design tools surpass the chips themselves in speed, power, and intelligence. Currently, most global technology companies use EDA tools developed by Synopsys and Cadence, both American. For China, these companies have imposed strict restrictions on designing chips smaller than 3 nanometers. This restricts China to designing 7 or 5 nanometer chips using their ETA tools, which is clearly insufficient. In this scenario, Huawei has emerged with its own ETA tool, capable of designing chips up to 14 nanometers, a promising start. Moreover, Huawei has produced China's most competitive artificial intelligence GPU to date, the 910B. Performance of the 910B is comparable to NVIDIA's A100. 7 nanometer chip manufactured by SMIC, Semiconductor Manufacturing International Corporation. According to Huawei, the 910B can perform 512 trillion floating point operations at 8 bit precision, while Nvidia's market leading H20 in China performs only 296 trillion operations, the same precision. Thus, it is evident that the 910B outperforms Nvidia's A120 and approaches the performance of the A100 chip. With its superior performance, the 910B has attracted many Chinese companies, generating numerous orders for Huawei. Baidu, for example, purchased hundreds of 910B GPU servers for training large-scale language models, LLM. Other clients include Alibaba and Tencent. Faced with this strong demand, SMIC is challenged to increase its production capacity, as it can currently produce only between 25,000 and 30,000 wafers per year, which corresponds to about 10 million GPUs. Therefore, SM needs to significantly expand its production. However, Huawei seeks to go further. They have begun incorporating AI chips into mobile devices, such as the Mate 60 smartphone. Huawei and TSMC, Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, manufacture 7 nanometer chips. Why is TSMC's production capacity greater than Huawei's? TSMC uses EUV lithography machines from the Dutch company ASML, while Huawei employs DUV lithography machines from the American Semiconductor Company. Although DUV machines can also manufacture 7 and 5 nanometer chips, their efficiency is lower compared to EUV, which not only impacts production but also raises manufacturing costs. To circumvent these limitations, SMAC has increased its investments, opening several new production lines. We believe they can overcome these manufacturing bottlenecks. Some question the feasibility of this, given the technological blockade at 5 nanometers. But indeed, China is also exploring several other crucial technologies, such as particle accelerators. If this research is successful, the manufacture of lithography machines will become viable. It is worth remembering that particle accelerators are more complex than DUV technology. ASML took a decade to develop EUV technology. Do you think our accelerator technology can surpass ASML's EUV? If China intends to achieve self-sufficiency in AI chips, another challenge is high bandwidth memory, which is the main bottleneck in GPU performance. Although we still do not have the capacity to produce high bandwidth memory devices, 
Changshin Memory has acquired some previous generation manufacturing equipment from Applied Materials Company for research and production. Huawei needs to go beyond designing and manufacturing high-performance chips. It is necessary to build a complete ecosystem, what we call a computing platform. Using this infrastructure, it is possible to efficiently distribute the workload, a key to NVIDIA's success as an AI hardware leader. NVIDIA's transition from a gaming giant to an AI powerhouse is due to the development of the CUDA platform. Simultaneously, NVIDIA invested in deep learning hardware, such as the Tensor Core, combining software and hardware to develop more efficient algorithms and deepen the use of AI in commercial environments. NVIDIA benefited from its long-term vision, but for Chinese technology companies, rebuilding a computing platform for hardware is a complex and arduous challenge. Companies like Cambricon need to collaborate with NVIDIA to make their hardware compatible, while other Chinese companies, like Huawei and Byron Technology, are working to develop their own computing platform. Speaking of Byron Technology, it is seen as one of China's most competitive GPU manufacturers. They have managed to raise several substantial rounds of investment. In August 2022, Byron launched the BR100 GPU. This chip uses TSMC's 7 nanometer process and chiplet encapsulation technology, which allows integrating several chips and memories. This technology is crucial for the BR100's architecture, making it very similar to NVIDIA's GPUs. However, there are currently no manufacturers in China capable of performing encapsulation with this technology. But we must recognize that the overall performance of the BR GPU is impressive, comparable to NVIDIA's latest GPUs. Unfortunately, TSMC has suspended collaboration with Byron, forcing them to make design adjustments. The good news is that they recently secured a new funding round of $280 million. Future of Byron technology looks promising. More Thread is also a Chinese technology startup. Their S4000 chip was designed specifically to accelerate artificial intelligence in data center. It can perform 200 trillion floating point operations at 8-bit precision and 100 trillion at 16-bit precision. Although the calculation speed is not very high, it is suitable for training large-scale language models. Company has already used 1,000 S4000 GPUs to assemble a cluster that, in one month, trained a model with 70 billion parameters. NVIDIA faces many competitors in China, including Huawei, Byron, Morethread, and Hygon. The main advantage of the Hygon 2 GPU is its excellent compatibility with NVIDIA's CUDA platform, allowing a smooth transition between systems. The tech startup Yunshan Technology has also developed the DPH10, a GPU compatible with NVIDIA's H20. In the field of semiconductors, China has many talented designers and a vast number of chip design experts. What is lacking are advanced encapsulation technologies and manufacturing capacity. We are already capable of training artificial intelligence models like GPT-4 and GPT-4.5. I believe that, in five years, China will be able to mass-produce new chips. Do you think China will be able to make this leap? Don't forget to subscribe to the channel to receive updates on our upcoming content, and be sure to check out our previous episodes.